Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech. And right now I'm gonna be introducing you to the first Revit project, which is the cabin. It says at the top uh, in the project, you'll design a simple three room house. Uh, be careful and accurate and consider all choices for practicality and making the occupant happy. This is gonna be like an underlying thing that we talk about a lot in um, this term. Uh, because we're going to be studying architecture and architecture is all about spaces that are occupied by people, whether it's a space for living or a space for working or a space for learning. It's going to be designed in a very special way to make the people that are there happy. You're going to be using some simple commands, walls, um, drawing in different ways. Reference planes could be helpful, not necessary. Doors and windows, certainly using the component command. For annotations, you're going to be using some dimension types, uh, linear and out aligned dimension types. You will be creating an area plan and all the normal navigation things. Here's a file type. Uh, step one, it says you use the Imperial Architecture template when beginning a new drawing. Uh, use other, using others reduces access to some objects and includes unnecessary views, and I'll explain that right now. So if we go to Revit and you pick New, over here, you have to pick the architecture template. And when you choose the architecture template, it comes with um, two floor plans and a site plan, the corresponding ceiling plans, and the four elevations, and that's it. Also, the templates that are used to view these things um, make everything visible. So you're not gonna be missing anything that you thought you built or that you were gonna build. Keeps everything nice and simple. If you didn't use that particular one, you would fall into this very, very problematic area. And you'll see that there's quite a few other things. There's um, three other levels that talk about the top of the footing in the basement slab and the foundation wall. Uh, they added a roof layer. And there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten three 3D views that come pre-made, which you'll only really be using one. So there's a lot of garbage that comes with the other templates that you really just don't want to do. So like I said, stick with this architecture template. We've already talked about the interface, including the ribbon, the type selector, the, uh, the properties palette, the project browser, all these things you should be familiar with by now. So if you need to review them, please take a look at the previous videos that we published. Going back to the sheet. Number two says for walls, you're gonna be choosing exterior brick on metal stud walls, uh, interior five inch partition walls, and the walls can be any shape, remembering they're designing building something, someone to live in. Um, you can include hallways and closets, but they really don't do anything for you in this particular project. This is such a small space. Um, so please make sure you're not wasting space for walkways that really don't go anywhere. As far as the rooms go, we're going to have a hybrid uh, bedroom slash living room as one room, a kitchen and a bathroom. The total room area, which is not standard, usually when you calculate the area of a home, you're you're calculating the area within the uh, exterior walls. But in this case, we're gonna be calculating the area of each room, and I want the sum of them to add up to 400 square feet, uh, with each room's minimum being 40 feet. So if you design a bathroom that's less than 40 square, 40 square feet, it's gonna be very, very cramped and not good. Uh, the space occupied by the walls uh, will not count in this project, so that's why you're gonna be doing room areas specifically. And when you need to be precise, you just use those temporary dimensions and they'll help you uh, navigate uh, by placing the walls in the exact position that you want from the exact distance from each other. Remember to toggle between the exterior face, interior face and wall core. Windows, I'm not specifying a window. I just want you to put at least one in each room. Uh, for the doors, there's a specification for the exterior doors including two side lights, which are those little things that, that are next to exterior doors that just, they're kind of like thin windows. Uh, interior doors, you're gonna use the standard uh, single flush and the um, opening one, which would have to be loaded. So quite a few things 
that you have to take account of when you're doing uh, those things. Let's take a quick look back in Revit. So for the walls, I'm going to be picking um, the brick on metal stud from the exterior. I'm just going to put four walls down. Not worrying about their size right now. Let me go change the visual settings. I'm going to go to fine detail with consistent coloring. Um, so that was the correct wall type, brick on metal stud. For the interior wall type, I'm going to choose the five inch two hour partition. So that's not where I want my walls to be, but just to show you that these are the wall types that we're gonna be using. Let me go back. Next, so we're just gonna pick some windows. So if I had here, to choose a window, I could just use these fixed windows that are preloaded without a problem. I'll use the ones that are two feet wide and four feet high. So maybe I'll just put a few over here. That's all. For the door, the only one that's loaded is a single flush door and we're supposed to be using the 36 by 84 size. I'm sorry, 30 by 84 size. So I'll just put one of them um, over here and over here. I'm allowed to use an opening, but that needs to be loaded. So I'm going to go into the door area and look for an opening. Here it is. And I want to load and use just the 30 by 84 here. So maybe I want to put an opening there. Exterior door, let's take a look, has to be a uh, single entry half arch glass wood 36 by 96. Single entry half arch glass wood. So it'll load, go in the residential here, exterior, single entry half arch glass wood flat. There it is. Hit OK. We're open and choose the correct size 36 by 96. Maybe I'll put that over here. Now I need the side lights. Side light full arch glass. And the size for this 12 by 96. These would go next to the door. So that's it for the exterior doors, interior doors, windows, walls. Next over here, we're going to be looking uh, at the levels. All I need to do is uh, show that I'm going to name level two to roof and you get to rename your levels uh, in any of the elevation views. So here's level two. I can rename it here. After you rename it, you'll see that uh, it prompts you to change the name of the floor plan that corresponds to it. The document also says that I have to adjust all of my wall heights to 10 feet. There's two ways to do that. If I select my walls in any of the view, I'm going to use control and add those in two. I could just make them have a tomp constraint up to level two or up to the roof level. And then as you can see in the elevation views, they'll all be the correct height. Or what I could have done instead was to leave them unconnected with a unconnected height of 10. So any of those things would have worked. Next. 
I'm gonna have to duplicate my first floor plan view and name it uh, first floor dimensions and then begin creating an area plan. So I'm just gonna show you the duplication here. And I will go ahead and rename that to be um, first floor dimensions. It doesn't have to be exactly that. You could change it to be level one dimensions or level one dims or something like that. It's fine. Create an area plan. That's where you click over here and pick area plan. As soon as you click this, it asks you a couple things. One, do you want it to be rentable or gross? Pick rentable, pick level one, hit OK. Do not say yes to this. Make sure you say no here. And you'll see that an area plan was created here, which is very similar to level one over here. But you're going to use this specific area plan to um, draw the area boundaries and such things. I'm going to make sure I show relevant dimensions for construction. So if I were to dimension this particular thing, I would go to annotate, pick aligns dimensions, and I don't want to pick center lines, I want to pick faces. So if I were checking my interior distances, I would go from like here to here. And perhaps here to here. And then here to here. We don't need that dimension because it's already there. And technically, I won't need this either because I'm going to put an exterior dimension one side. And then the other. Dimensions look a little big, so I'm going to change the scale. Currently, it's one eighth equals one foot. So I'm going to go to um, let's make it three sixteenths. So that's better. So that would be good for dimensioning my rooms. Um, it says over here. In the dimension view, nothing should be visible except walls or dimensions. So make sure you do your dimensions uh, to the appropriate degree. Um, right now, I just did the walls, but you want to do the windows and, and doors too, without it looking too crowded. Let me go back to the level one view. That was the dimension view. For area, I'll just quickly show how to create one area. Um, it's pretty simple. You want to click on boundary and draw the boundaries. The boundaries are going to be the interior part. So if I click just draw a little rectangle over here, you'll see that the pink lines align over here. And I'm going to click these little locks because the locks will allow me to then adjust the walls if I wanted to and it will move the area boundary with it. So now I have the area boundary there and I'm just going to tag the area by picking the area here, not the tag area. I clicked that initially, that was a mistake. I'm going to click the area here and pick area and then just drop the uh, item right in there and it tells me the room area, no problem. So do that for the other rooms too. Make sure the numbers add up to 400. Lastly, the furniture. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before with like loading in things. Uh, the only pieces that are loaded in uh, prior, you'll see are uh, like a desk, parking spaces, and some uh, trees and stuff like that. So what I wanna do is I want to go to load. I'll back up a little bit here. It's going to take me a while to find this. Um, here's plumbing, architectural, fixtures, 
and water closets would be toilets. So I get a nice uh, 3D toilet or a wall mounted one. I don't think there's going to be a wall mounted toilet here. So just a regular 3D toilet. These are just architectural symbols. So you don't want to use anything that's specifically 2D. So I get a toilet, throw it over there, load in um, a sink. These are inside vanities. I don't know if there's any, uh, there doesn't any, appear to be any freestanding sinks here. Maybe this one. No, I don't think so. So I'll just pick this. Oh, that's a 2D symbol. See, I just made the same mistake. I'll just put the sink here. And I'm going to definitely want to fix the fact that that's not on anything. And a shower and, and other things. You'll find loaded in here uh, quite a few things if you look around. Here's some showers. You want a shower stall. There's only a 2D one there. Uh, so maybe just put a bathtub. Something like that. That would be okay if you want to do that. Um, the kitchen stuff. You will find... Here it is. Specialty equipment. Domestic. And you'll see all the uh, the kitchen items that you can want in here. What else? I want a bed. Pretty sure that won't be hard to find. So a component. There's no category for bed, so let's look for furniture. Here it is, beds couple different beds here. Just pick any one of them, except for the hospital bed. Maybe you want to use the hospital bed, that's okay, I guess. And then you just kind of install it somewhere. This is pretty big, so let's get like a smaller one. Maybe this is supposed to be the bedroom. I don't know. This house that I designed is way too big. I'm purposely not going far with any of this stuff. And that's it. So make sure you, you cover all the stuff that's on here. And um, be very, very meticulous. And that'll be your uh, introduction to Revit. Good luck and uh, thank you very much.